the location is fantastic. In the middle of Knightsbridge, Kensington just down the road. Um, the West End is round the corner. I met three people in the first few hours who I've known, I still know now, and I've probably known for the rest of my life. In a recent survey, Imperial College came top of British universities in engineering, in science, and in overall academic criteria. It really is great um, to be taught by such brilliant professors and um, the, the leading men really in, in, and women in their field and it, it certainly makes you very much more enthusiastic about your subject. You see from the lecture material that it's really up to date because you'll, you'll get your lecture handouts for example and then the professor will go and publish his work in a scientific journal and then you'll go and read about it which is really amazing. The purpose of this tutorial is to cover the work that we looked at last week in terms of the lecture on medical imaging. And After most of our lectures we'll have a follow-up tutorial where we will go through the sheets that are handed out after each lecture and we'll talk about the problems and it's on a much more informal basis than a lecture so we actually get the undivided and personal attention of the tutor as he goes round between the students. One of the things we do is to um, draw in the Science Museum. It's, it's brilliant really because um, no other university in the world or indeed in Britain has got uh, this kind of facility, which I mean the, the museum is just next to the college. A lot of the uh, departments at Imperial College have an option for going abroad at some point in the course. There's a year in Europe course available for a lot of the different courses here. It involves spending one year away in a foreign university. I've been taking part in a research project at the University of Padua. There seem to be a lot of people who do their science degrees without taking any part in, in outside issues. And that seems to me a shame. Certainly throughout Europe, it's normal for a working scientist to be able to speak two or three languages. So I think that it's very important for us to make the same effort to try and learn new languages, new ways of working. Je te présente Mademoiselle Dubois. I'm really looking forward to spending the final year out in Paris. Imperial College has a very well stocked language laboratory which is available for booking in lunch times and in free periods. I think uh, it'll be great to get used to another language and a different culture. Looking forward to the wine and the uh, girls and uh, that sort of thing. <laughs> There's a new course here at Imperial College which is joint physics and music and I've got quite involved in all aspects of music within the college. I mean they've got a uh, one of the country's best um, college orchestras here and they've got all sorts of chamber societies and all that sort of thing. They've got a choir as well that you can join um, and it's all quite large scale. They have a sort of sponsorship scheme where you can audition to get a place on a course which actually pays for your lessons while you're at the Royal College of Music and that's just a date adjacent to Imperial College so it's really nice you can just like pop off in the afternoons and have a lesson with one of their experienced teachers. Well a career service can help you in a number of ways. Obviously for most people the uh, aim of the game is uh, employability and getting a job at the end of the day and uh, Imperial's got a very good careers office and they'll help you in, in a big way to get your CV and to get your applications on the road. There's a computer system called Prospect where you input your details and then churn out some, some data about what careers you'd be suited to. And there's a large library there of information as well. I've recently become a chartered engineer through the Royal Aeronautical Society. I read physics at Imperial and I was sponsored by British Aerospace. I worked all over the UK with British Aerospace and I also worked in Paris and Munich. I then went on to work for Ricardo International as their strategy director and now I'm working for Anderson Consulting as a manager in their aerospace and automotive division. I'm a designer. I design things, consumer products. And consumer products have to both work well and look good. 
And so the sort of qualifications I did was a mechanical engineering degree at Imperial College, which obviously helped me to make products that work well. And then I went on to do a joint degree with the Royal College of Art and Imperial College in aesthetic design, uh, industrial design engineering. This enabled me to design products like the bike, which both work well and hopefully look good. We're right in the centre of what's happening in London. Five minutes away there's the Royal College of Art, the Royal College of Music, the Royal Albert Hall, the Victorian Albert Museum, the Natural History Museum, the Science Museum, the list goes on and on. I think it's one of the best really, I mean it's, it's in the most picturesque part of London and you're near to all the major attractions and there's just so much to do and it's a very pretty area. It can be quite daunting the first time you come because everything seems so rich and glamorous around you, you know, but after three years you just take it for granted. Well, Hyde Park's really close. It's only a couple of hundred yards up the road. So it's good to go up there and get away from all the, the dust and the cars and the concrete and, uh, you know, you can go for a run. I would go running there a lot. I think it's very important for scientists and engineers to have a broader outlook on life. And Imperial College being so central to London is a very good place to get that broader horizon with theatres and concerts and all sorts of activities on the doorstep. As far as uh, accommodation is concerned, all the first year students are actually guaranteed a place in hall now and all those halls are within 10 or 15 minutes walking distance. So really very close and very convenient. As far as finances, well, it is a little more expensive in London, but you get a London waiting on your grant. How did your lacrosse season go? Quite well, it started really well. Yeah. The halls are small, so you get to know everybody very quickly. Um, this hall has 72 people, so you know them all within a couple of months. And uh, it's, there's a great cross-section of people within that small number. Imperial is not only a cosmopolitan environment, but the whole of London is. And it's, it's very interesting to meet so many people from, from so many different countries and to just um, learn about their culture and their traditions. And, um, and I think it really helps you just to appreciate other people from other countries as well. And, and also you maybe have a chance to go and visit them or whatever in their vacation. When you first come to Hall in your first week, we have something known as Freshers Week and they, they arrange literally something for you every single night. They'll arrange um, trips to cinemas, trips to basketball, playing basketball, tennis, you know, um, trips to see concerts, plays, and um, put your name down on the list and you get a subsidy, you know, so it works out quite cheaply. Most of the Imperial Halls are self-catering. But there's one hall where they provide you with, uh, what I think it's one or two meals a day. Because of our position, there's always restaurants nearby, fast food places, and there are also places available at the university, canteens and what have you, where you can always pick up, pick up a meal. It's expensive to the outsider who looks in and doesn't see the, the student places to go to. If you live here for a year or two years, you find the bars that are cheap to go to, you find the restaurants that are cheap to go to. Just because they're cheap doesn't necessarily mean they're crap. Alrighty. Hi. How's it going then? Tough day again. Yeah. As usual. Oh, yes, please. Yes, please. So, what did you do today, Teresa? Uh, cockroaches again. Really boring. Uh, dissection, gut dissection. At about two thirds of the way through the first year, you know who your friends are, and uh, you all get together and decide who's going to live with who and go out and start looking and it's, it's actually great fun looking for somewhere to live. We've got two tube stations to choose from or we can cycle or we can walk if we fancy a 20 minute walk. It's not that expensive to live in London because uh, as long as you look well you can find something that's fine for you. Uh, we're paying £40 a week here which is great, that's, that's really good value. Um, other friends are paying about £50 
um, and hauls are around £50 as well. When you come to Imperial you have a freshers week which um, consists of a week where you have no lectures um, and it's just getting to know everybody in hall and joining societies and clubs. Um, in the first few days there's a fair on over in Queen's Lawn where all the societies you can join at IC meet. One of the things at Imperial that I've really enjoyed is the breadth of clubs and societies that you can join, uh, catering for all your interests. And I've taken advantage of um, a lot of the music societies and the drama society. And one of the really good things about the drama society is that they attend the Edinburgh Festival every year. Action. Student Media Imperial, we have a, a TV station, Stoic. Uh, they've just expanded their studio. Avoid capital punishment. Listen to IC Radio. This is Imperial College Radio. Coming uh, there's a radio station. AM. And um, there's a student newspaper, Felix. Felix is produced completely by students. It's printed in-house. It means you get the chance to design a magazine, lay out a magazine, write a magazine, produce a magazine, and even deliver the damn thing at the end of the day. Even though we're in the middle of London, there are lots of sports on offer here. We've got playing fields near Heathrow where you can play cricket, rugby, um, football. And we've also got a boathouse down on the River Thames. We always do well at Henley, and we just set two records. Imperial College is one of the only universities in the country with a yacht club as well as a sailing club. That's probably why uh, we, we do so well in the international competitions. Last year we won the Jet Sea Cup, this trophy here, out in the Caribbean. We also took part in the Speedo theme in south, southern France last year. That was uh, another big pan-European event. The women are, are, are very active in sports as well. We have a women's football team, a women's rugby team and uh, obviously hockey and most of the competitive sports. It doesn't matter like, how talented you are or not, because there's always people that are the same standard as you. The sports centre is very close to four of the halls of residence, and very close to the university itself. It's got very good facilities, which they've just updated, with a great weights gym and swimming pool and squash courts. Well, I do a lot of life saving, and living in Selkirk Hall, where I do, I'm about 30 seconds away from the sports centre and that's really convenient and it's so cheap as well for students. If you want to come to Imperial, you can visit at any time on your own or come to one of the special open days. Students will show you around and you'll have the chance to see the facilities here and meet the professors and lecturers. Imperial College organise a, a series of taster courses um, for women who want to go into science and engineering. Um, they're an opportunity to come to Imperial College, um, have a look at the place and to really find out more about professions that they may want to enter into. It's good to get the chance to come here for the night and stay the night because if you just got the chance to come for a day like other open days, you don't really get the chance to see what the university's like. You stay the night and you don't you see the you know the things they want to hide from you much more. I like the idea of actually doing the laboratory sessions because then you can you can actually try doing stuff um, taking as if it was the real lesson or something. Yeah. And you also get a tour around it. I feel that you really get involved in it because you're given the opportunity to really apply knowledge that you've perhaps learned from A level. At Commemoration Day, you get such a buzz, you're at home, you're getting ready, you're putting your suit on, you get your gown, you meet all your friends, you take all your pictures, then you go into the Royal Albert Hall itself and it's really big and the choir's there and you sit down and the Dean summons you up to get your degree and you go up one by one. It's such a wonderful atmosphere because like all the camera flashes are going and it's just so, the atmosphere is really electric. It's hard work but you get a very good degree at the end of it that's recognised by everyone in the world practically. So it's worth the hard work and you do enjoy it. I'll really be proud to be an Imperial College graduate. I really feel that these past three years have been well worth it and I'm hoping that it'll really stand me in good stead for my future career. <laughs>